I'm just going to start recording now. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Episode 77 of the Mind Heist podcast. This is take two. It might even be take three. Depends how you count. <laughs> uh, alhamdulillah. Um, now we need to try and like re say what we said when we first started. <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, how's it going, bro? How's life? No one will know the secret of the hat. Shh, let's not tell him. Let's leave it in the unknown. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hat. <laughs> well, what we did say is the hat doesn't have a made in sign, which means it's probably legit and authentic. You know what? You reminded me. Yeah. Remember, bro, that, that day we last recorded and then I got really ill? Bro, yeah, I was yeah. out. I was out for like four days. Today's the only day where I'm actually feeling okay. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, wow. I was out of it, bro. I don't know what happened to me. Bro, you got Corona, bro. I thought I might have Corona. I mean, I you might have had it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, that was very it's rude. Not a, it's not even a big deal. Hmm. I probably got Corona right now. My, <laughs> uh, my um, son went to hospital a few days ago. The baby. Um, oh, the baby, yeah. The baby. He was there for a few days, bro, but... Oh no, Ooh. just overnight. Yeah, he was there overnight. Mm. But alhamdulillah, but he got tested while he was up there and he was negative, I think. Or at least they said that if, if you get a call back, then he, yeah. it, it would be something. But we haven't had one, so. Right. You know what, though? These tests are, seem to be very unreliable because uh, apparently, yeah, <laughs> this is, um, I think, you know, yes, legit story. Although, obviously, we can't verify the details. The, the, the president of uh, Tanzania, he test he he uh like got the swab, he rubbed it on like something like a watermelon or something. And yeah, he, he tested it and it came positive. So, Allah. yeah. And you know, in the UAE now they've got this system which is, and I think this is because they understand that the tests are not very reliable. So if you test positive, then you have to come to another place, not the normal testing, but you go to an assessment center. They're going to test you a second time. Now. Mm. Um, if you come back positive, then obviously probably if, it, if it's not severe, you just stay at home and you know, you've got it kind of thing. But if it comes back negative the second time, then they test you a third time. So, I mean, they understand that it's not very reliable. Mm. So, um, yeah, so all the numbers are way off, man. Whatever the numbers are, they're off, you know, they might be uh, sure. worse, better, this and that, but it's definitely off. My perspective on it has just shifted like quite a bit since... It all oh, is started. that why you got tin foil on on your ha head? Yeah, bro. This is because I'd get rid of those five G waves, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How did your perspective change? It's just silly, fam. It's just look. I'm even saying fam. Like it's just silly, man. Like the rules here are silly. It's not even a lockdown. Yeah. And I just expected it to have wiped out like half of my work colleagues by now. Oh, really? Uh, okay, yeah. But nobody at work has got it, and like we're just... Not to say it's not there, I just, I don't get it, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, likely likelihood is that many of you got it and didn't even know, isn't it? Yeah, if that's the case. But at the same time, like, I would have expected, like, more news about people testing positive that didn't... Or, do you know what I mean? I don't know if they can do um, historical stuff. Like, can they... Does the test show that you've had it? I don't know. Yeah, you do antibody tests for that. But even oh. even them, even then they're not sure about how, how people build immunity to it or yeah. if you build immunity just from having it or et cetera. So many unknowns, which, you know, that's uh, understandable and stuff. But the problem I have is there's so many unknowns and then the, the media and then everyone who amplifies the media on social media yeah is make it telling everyone to, to, to go crazy basically and, and get so scared so i think also um for, for a lot for the first time in a long time the news has been sort of overrun by something else now which is mm. obviously the you know the, the 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 death of george floyd well the, i'd say murder of george floyd and the the protests that ensued and all that sort of stuff that's like what's taken yeah. up my Raiding and stuff, and and I know that may be off topic today, but there is a question on it on the curious cat. Okay, so, so we'll deal with we... that maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, be because we're we're kind of uh, starting late, so let's go straight into questions. So, um, okay, reading for the third time this question. Yeah, uh, Noseva 
Naseba Ali, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. She says, Jazakum Allah khairan for the new podcast episode this week, which was the one we did about conspiracies, vaccine, this and that. She said, I wanted to share this story with you regarding a sister's experience with her daughter and vaccines. Inshallah, I hope this will be something, uh, just something to think about. Alhamdulillah, I'm vaccinated myself, but I think it's good to know about why people might be hesitant to vaccinate. Um, Allah knows best. I'm not sure how common something like this is. May Allah protect us and all the Muslims from all evil. Amin. So, did you hear me that time when I read it? <laughs> no, I didn't. I hear this time, but I meant last time I didn't yeah, read yeah, it. No. Yeah, this time you did. So, the, the, basically, the, the deal is, um, this sister, she, her daughter, she got her, um, her taken for the, uh, what's it called? The DTaP um, vaccine, which is diphtheria and some other things. Um, and the day after she got a seizure and from then on in her life, she just kept getting seizures, um, until, mm -hmm. until things, and the doctors actually said it must be a reaction to the vaccine. So the doctors themselves said it, it was that, um, mm -hmm. and basically like her, 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 um, her health really went downhill, her daughter's health. And it was very, you know, bad time for her, of course. Now, uh, fast forward, um, her, her daughter's now 10 years old and, um, she, she still has like, she eats. Uh, blended food via a G tube. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but you can imagine something quite yeah. difficult. And um, so she doesn't have seizures anymore, but because of the treatment and trying to deal with the seizures and all of that, um, she now lives in this way. So very difficult. Um, and honestly, the article is not even like uh, saying like, uh, you know, vaccine agenda and this, it's just saying this is a real thing that happened to me. And the doctors themselves said it's something, you know, some kind of reaction to the vaccine. So mm. uh, that's what the sister was sharing. It's difficult, isn't it? I mean, you can't help but feel bad for somebody in that situation. Mm. Um, I don't know how the the thing that it's the the I don't know this disease or condition that it's vaccinating against. I don't really know what that is. I don't know how prevalent that is where they're from. Uh, I've never heard of it personally, but doesn't mean it's not prevalent. Mm. Um, it's, it's, although, and, you know, I'm glad you said that it's not necessarily something that's um, an article that is like saying, oh, don't get vaccinated. I think obviously it's just drawing awareness that these things happen. And, and I think it's, it's with anything, or, you know, in the same way that someone who's anti-vaccine could say, oh, look at this. Then I could mm. say, yeah, but look at all these thousands of people who have been vaccinated and they're fine. And yeah. they haven't got the thing that they've been vaccinated for. Yeah, you yeah know? exactly. Yeah. So it's one of those ones. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, diphtheria is a real thing. Um, polio is a real thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've got a distant family member who got polio, I think, when they, when they were born or when they were a young child. And they don't have use of one of their legs because of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you vaccinate people, then that doesn't happen usually, you know. So... Um, yeah, but I think interesting as well. The sister was writing about how it was a, it was a test for her, and it was something where it tested her, you know, her iman in qadr, and this was written and these kind of things. So that's something to reflect on as well. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like I went on holiday and I fell off a bridge, and you know, I broke my back and I'm paralyzed. It's like, uh, does that mean no one should ever go on holiday again? It, you know, you could say that, isn't it? Um, it's interesting. I don't know. I mean, thinking back to the the, uh, the the episode we did last week, where I spoke about my dad's cancer. Yes, it's it's interesting how very little time in like mental time, mental space, I've given to the thought of what caused my dad's cancer. Like, mm. because it, it's it is a discussion that could be had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who gets it could say, you know, if I didn't eat this or if i didn't do this or if i didn't smoke or if i didn't do you understand um so you could spend a lot of time thinking if only i didn't you know but all i all i can think about and i don't know about him i don't know about him or the rest of the family but i'm sure they're similar like all we can think about is this came from a lost planet to Allah. so mm. like it's such an unknown entity that it just comes from, from a lot it's so something like this i don't know like if it happened i don't know how much thought i would give to battling i don't know mm. i think that's the the state of of us as a really as a world as a, a world society whatever you want to call it that we have accepted 
heart disease, um, maybe being overweight, obesity, cancer, we kind of accepted these things as things that just happen. And, you know, in, in many, many diseases, many illnesses, it, it, that is the case. But when it comes to cancer, I think it's far more avoidable than uh, the general person really feels like. Obviously, avoidable in the sense of using the SBEB, using the SBEB like um, avoiding certain uh, chemicals, certain materials, uh, avoiding eating too much, these kind of things. That's what I mean. So um, in terms of, yes, people are getting it all the time. I think, what is it? One in four people will get cancer in their life or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but as, yani, as responsible Muslims who, uh, you know, their body has a right over them, we should uh, understand, you know, at some point we have to understand that you can't just shovel uh, rubbish into your body and then get surprised when you get mm. cancer. Um, I guess so. it, it needs to become any part of the culture that it's like, no, we don't eat four, five, six meals a day. We don't eat, you know, ice cream every day because that stuff does this and this and this. I think it's not hundred percent clear, of course, where cancer always comes from as well. Even, even the, mm. the people educated on this. Um, but I, I do feel, of course, you can't deny that living in the, the way of the Prophet in terms of uh, not eating too much, um, not sleeping too much, um, mm. all of these things definitely is going to uh, be positive, isn't it? I've just found it uh, from my research, it's just almost like cancer is basically, the, the origin of it is basically mm. like uh, part and parcel of the human body. It's just what the human body does when, it, when we talk about yeah you know cell cell division and mm -hmm. you know when your cells are dividing or, more, or you know dying and then you know multiplying whatever mm -hmm. so many times and there is going to be that one that isn't or the, yeah. the coding or whatever is wrong and then yeah it just keeps multiplying rapidly but then there are you know your body fights that off generally it comes and deletes that but yes. sometimes it just misses it yes yeah we all have cancer but, cells in us um, yeah, but sometimes yeah. our lifestyle um, feeds them and allows them to grow. And that's when mm. it becomes the problem. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, this is, uh, this is it. I, honestly, I, I, I do give some credibility to the idea that maybe vaccines should be given later in life. Like when you're five or whatever. Maybe not when you're three months old. Uh, maybe, that's an, maybe that's a thing. It's just so hard to like, get a concrete answer. And... It's like, what am I going to do with my kids? You in know the what? Meantime? I don't it's know. bad, isn't it? Because I, you've just reminded me like a few days ago, my son was due for, because he had to go to hospital, he didn't have it, but he was due for vaccination. Mm. My wife's like, oh, he's got a vaccine at four o'clock. I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, yeah, I'll take him. And I don't even like, I wouldn't have even asked what it was for. Like she, <laughs> she didn't even, no, well, like, I'll tell you, I'm being completely honest. Like she just, she said he's got vaccination and I didn't even ask what it was for. And I know even if I took him, I wouldn't have even asked what it was about or what it was for mm. because I don't know. And maybe I should care more. It just shows how like ignorant I am about this thing. Like I just, yeah. cause I know that I've had it. Like I've even had, even recently I had a hepatitis B injection um, vaccination. I need to have another one and I have that for work and I just had it and I was fine. And I'm just, do you know what I mean? Like, so I've just had an email actually yesterday saying that I'm, due for my second one because i think you need to have three of them or something mm. um so i'm meant to have a second one and then but yeah bro it's just... yeah honestly i'm not that concerned um as an adult um getting vaccinated as much as i just feel like children are developing as long as you're still developing it's an issue because any any kind of damage done at that age it's kind of the the effect is multiplied in a way mm. um so it's like imagine uh, at age uh, 11 you could not you couldn't uh, improve your reading ability let's say you're mm. paused at that thing so it, the effect is huge rather than if you were paused at 21 you know what i mean that's kind of yeah. how i see it i got <coughs> vaccinated when i went for hajj uh, i can't think of what it was for now i can't remember <laughs> But I wanted to go high, so I did as I was told. So yeah, you want it, you need to get boom. There you go. Put the microchip in me. Go on. <laughs> it's for Hajj, bro. <laughs> it's fun. Should we do the one from here? Yeah, go ahead. That's curious, cat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna do. Oh, should I do the oldest first or? Yeah, oldest man. Older. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but okay. This one wanted a podcast topic. Yeah, forget uh, that for now. Yeah. 
God, we've been forgetting that since January, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, God. I'm going to read this out. And whether it's a question or not, we'll find out by the end. Yeah. Uh, Salam. I hope you're both well. For the past couple of months, I've been struggling with something internally, and I don't know what the root of my problem is. As of late, I've come to acknowledge my feelings, but I don't quite understand what I'm supposed to do about it. I can't think of reasons to wake up the following day. I know that sounds strange, but I don't have anything to keep me going. Yes, alhamdulillah, I pray and stuff, but that doesn't really change my feelings. There's no joy in waking up. The thought of having to go through another day where nothing's different, yet each day just passes me by and inside there's no happiness. Don't get me wrong, there's some temporary pleasures, playing football, greeting my parents in the morning and evening, praying or listening to Quran. But I feel an emptiness that eats me up um, and each passing day I just feel like I have less to look forward to the next day. How do I get out of this? How can I change my perspective? Is there all, is this all linked back to sins I've committed before that I before that I never really acknowledged and now they're weighing heavier on me because of this trial I'm going through? Apologies for the essay. It's difficult to express it concisely. Any advice is going to be appreciated greatly. Your brother in Islam at best. He wrote his name, so I read his name. His mm. brother, First name isn't that identifiable, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, yeah man yeah man this is always well, a this is always a difficult one because you know you, you've got maybe some ideas some advice but then at the same time you're like uh i think i would you know i think of three things bro mm. i think because i've been there you know i've been in that position before um Maybe even four things. All right, let's start with the f f first thing. Um, make sure you're not a person who is, it's, it's going to sound really you know, harsh, whatever, but you're not a person that's enjoying the sadness. You know, There's some people that when they're sad, mm -hmm. they kind of feed off the sadness by, I mean, he doesn't mention listening to music, but like maybe playing sad music and then... Um, posting stuff on social media or letting the world know that you're upset so you can get some sort of attention mm. bathing uh, in that it kind of, yeah bathing, bathing. In it, that's a good term yeah yeah self sort of pity self loathing and that you know kind of like oh i'm the i say this a lot but like i'm the i'm the main character in the movie who's going through a hard time and look the camera's on me look at mm. it do you get me so there's that side of it then there's three things that i you know, whatever we say, it's your it's your job to act upon it. That's the thing. Whatever advice you get given, if mm. you don't do it, then there's no point even listening to the advice. Mm. My first one is is to deeply, deeply ponder over paradise, like deeply ponder over it. Um, and I do that even today. Um, you know, every day, just deeply think about it. Deeply think about it as a destination, as a final destination not like as a fairy tale i think we think about jannah a lot because when we think about jannah we don't think about it as a as a real tangible thing you know jannah is as real as you know this this book you know what i mean like mm. jannah is as real as this like this me feeling this that's as real as it gets you know i was driving to my my mother's house earlier with my wife and just we stopped at some traffic lights and well, like Ali, i said to her do you know what imagine Jenna is so real. It's all, it's as real as how we're expecting to go to my mum right now. And we know that my mum's house is there and it exists. And it's, and we, you know, that's how real it is. It's not this thing that's, you know, we, we, when we, when we read about Jenna and Jehennam and we read about even stories of the prophets and stuff, we, we sort of read it because we're so used to watching movies, bro, and entertainment and stuff that it's just make believe that when we read something just as fascinating, like, fantastical we think oh okay and close the, close the book and now we're back in reality no 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 that was reality like that's real yeah. you know and that's that's why i, I you know i want to i i advise everybody to think about jenna as if it's just as if it's like tomorrow as if it's as real as tomorrow as if it's as real as you right now in this moment that's exactly and even more how you feel about jenna it would just be as real and even more real than that mm. um the second thing I'd say, was that the third thing? I don't remember. Is get involved in charity. Um, watch, you know, expose yourself to people that are worse off than you. Um, 
get yourself angry with yourself, you know, in a way that like, when, you know, this Ramadan, I was watching Qalbi in and I was, I was trying to get involved in more charity work and stuff. And I was sad, bro. And I was upset with myself that I could ever complain about something when there's people complaining about, you know, I felt guilty that I allowed myself to be in that situation. Um, and I think, you know, maybe harsh, but sometimes you need some tough love and you need to give yourself some tough love. And I think you should be soft towards other people and you should be a bit harsh on yourself, uh, especially in that circumstance. Because it's very easy to slip into this sort of, as you said, like bathing in this sort of sadness and emptiness of it all. And the final thing, which could tie into that, is just you need to start developing hobbies or projects or doing stuff like setting yourself like you said, okay, let's talk about yourself. I mean, you've got like this book project going on. That can be something for anybody, you know. It's something that you'll just mm. wake up and you, you do, you know. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, bro. Bro, like now, like, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to take like this graphic design stuff I'm doing. Like, I'm just loving it, bro. And bro, to the that, point the where. The one you did was quite sick. Yeah. <laughs> How's it there, bro? And this is it. Like, bro, I'm having times now which I haven't had ever before where I'm like, you know, my, my wife and kids will go to bed and I'm like, I'll go over to like the Xbox and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And I'll come and sit on the computer and I'll work on something mm. and I'll feel so much better after I do that. And then I did it. And then this next night I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, let me go. And then I'll, I'll look at the Xbox. I'm like, what's actually going to happen? I'm just going to sit there. I'm going to play it. I'm gonna, and if, as soon as I switch it off, I'm gonna be like, oh, I haven't achieved anything. But then when I'm on here, every time I go on Photoshop, I make it sort of like a lot of the times I make it a mission to learn a new sort of skill on there and implore a new technique and, you know, apply something that I haven't done before and maybe go on YouTube and look up a quick tutorial and be like, Oh, actually, yeah, let me try and use that. And then suddenly my skills have expanded and, you know, I have the love seen the benefit of it. I feel better in myself. Um, and, and, you know, and the last thing I'd advise is social media and its effect on you. Um, I can't speak for our brother Abbas. I don't know what his social media usage is like, but if you're just following people that are making you jealous of their lifestyle, or you're literally consuming that with, with jealousy, like you're just seeing loads of people just, Oh, they're out all the time. Or look, they're driving this fancy car or a lot of it is social stuff, isn't it? Like you see, you just see loads of people out with their friends and they're taking photos and you just see that snapshot of happiness and you're just seeing everybody's snapshot of happiness, whether it's real or fake. Um, and you just keep seeing that, keep seeing that you think everybody's having fun apart from you, you know, but it's not the reality, bro. Cause how many people laugh when they send a laughing face emoji? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's the way I like to think of it. Mm. If you post a lol, then how many lols, how many times are you actually laughing when you're lolling? You know what I mean? Like you're not. <laughs> so, but anyway, have you got any advice? I've, I've obviously taken over the mic there. <laughs> No, you said uh, you said some good stuff, man. Uh, I don't. I was trying to think. Uh, I just have a couple of things that came to my mind, but while you were talking, nothing else came. So I'll just share that. Um, I was thinking there is the the kind of basic chemical reality of things. You know, sleep uh -huh. well, exercise, eat well. You know, and I don't need to tell you how to do those things. Sometimes it's so obvious, but it's just about the discipline to make it a reality. Sometimes people mm. feel. Uh, down like when I think of time when I was like feeling quite down um, you know I wasn't sleeping uh, well didn't have a good routine and all this and I'm not saying that was the only reason I felt like that but it definitely would have contributed right mm. um, the other thing is like you were saying uh, be a bit harsh on yourself I think you know what it is you've got to realize that if you you know live you know, in, in the UK or US or whatever, wherever you are, any, any, even if in other countries, if you're kind of well off, you're decent off, then mm. you have a duty to make something of yourself. You know, you don't have the, yani, it's your responsibility to do something. You know, the mm. more um, luxury, the more um, comfort you have, the more it's a duty to do something. You can't not do something. You can't um, just get your job and have your wife, have your kids and, and die. That's, that's a failure in, in my view. When the world is the way it is, so many people without a guidance, so many people living in injustice and et cetera, et cetera. You can't just live that life. You know, that is your purpose. You know, if you're wondering what's the point of this and that, your purpose is to take the ni'mah, the, the ni'am that Allah has given you 
and and use it for good that's your mm. thing that's your responsibility it's not like oh no that's that's a nice thing to do no mm. you have to do it because of the you know uh, advantage you have if you like mm. so uh if you have the if you have time that other people don't have if you have money that other people don't have and health that other people don't have you have to use that's your duty and responsibility to use it for some kind of mm. good and nobody is using it or most people are not using it uh 90% even 80% but it's about uh maybe that just flick uh switch you know flicking on the switch in your brain that forget like looking forward to this and that like uh, i i've just got this duty like it's a duty i have to do it so that's what i yeah. came to my mind um i think i felt down not in the sense of i've got nothing to 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 look forward to i felt down in the sense of like i suck my life sucks i haven't achieved anything maybe that's a different feeling slightly um one thing that did help me when i was really kind of feeling down and un, un, sh, unsure of what i was going to do in the future was husn al-dhan billah right which mm. is like before you see um any plans unraveling any good good fortune if you like coming towards you uh, mm. things going well for you before you see that you must have certainty before it happens that it's going to be good right and that's husn al-dhan billah you know that's us assuming that look maybe i'm homeless now maybe i'm uh, i'm failing all my exams and i don't know how i'm going to pass my degree whatever it is maybe that's the situation you're in but you need to blindly believe that there is good coming because of allah because allah yeah. is because allah is that's the only reason you don't need further yani yeah, reasons or justifications to be optimistic about the future just the fact yeah. that allah is your lord that is a reason to know that something good is coming yeah and even if they you know they they also have to have the gratitude for the now because yeah wallahi akhi you you see some people and you hear about the tests and trials they've had mm. and you just think oh my god what's it, like look how their life has just completely been destroyed and then you think what's stopping that from happening to me yeah. nothing really yeah. not much honestly what is stopping you from becoming the you know the next homeless guy on the street you know absolutely not much at all bro not much at all literally in a in a couple of hours that could be me yeah, yeah. it's true and that's yeah. that's maximum bro forget the minimum bro it could happen like in a second do you know what i mean my house could burn down right now and just that's it mm. I lose my wife and kids uh i've got okay what do i do mm. do you know what i mean go yeah. to my mom's or whatever okay maybe <laughs> but then with something no but honestly like what if something happens okay then what and then what? and then like it's just you know, yeah, you just don't know. Actually. You just don't know. So mm. I think of that sometimes, like, will I be able to deal with something like that, or how will I? It, I don't ask actually myself, will I be able? I know I will be able to, inshallah, uh, because that's the optimism that Allah, Allah is El Qawi. Allah will give you the strength, right? Mm. But it's like, what would that be like? And it's like what you were talking about last episode about your dad. Like, if that happened to me, mm. how would I deal with that? Like. Um, oh, then, so, honestly, yeah, there's so many things that we think we're just gonna live our, the rest of our lives with. Like I was talking even yes in that last episode about like the whole thing about limbs, bro. Like mm. we just look at our hands and just assume we'll have them forever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you could literally look at your hands right now, and one of these hands or both of them could just be gone next year. Mm. Like you just don't yeah. know, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah, you just don't know, Achi. Yeah. That's well, why I, I end up. I end up like concluding that. I guess I'll just I'll deal I'll deal with it when it comes and 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 I, I can't like because I don't know what's like or what's going to be like. It's like of course I, I just have the conviction that Allah will help me through it. Inshallah, whatever of course, is coming. But, but the important thing is to have the gratitude for it now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Get. That's true. Yeah. The, the main thing is to just in that moment oh, yeah. because let's let's be real. Every thought that comes to your mind comes to your mind by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm. Yeah. We we are we are beings in this dunya and the dunya itself is all under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control. So I always think of it as subhanAllah, Allah has just given me that thought. Allah has given me that thought, that opportunity to think about my own limbs and my own mortality, and then that's an opportunity for me to be grateful. So Allah has literally put the thought in my head just so I can be grateful to him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like what that's a gift. Yes. That's yeah, a gift above anything. So yeah, mm. okay. Alhamdulillah, sincerely. Mm. Yeah. yeah, these these fleeting thoughts or these quick fire thoughts, 
yeah, they're, they're like that. They, they come and go, right? Um, you can do nothing with them or you can turn it into a, you know, edger or into uh, a thing. Exactly. And, and you know, what? what's the easiest, subhanAllah, how, how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to gain good deeds just from a thought of, you know, and thought and then obviously the action in terms of, 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 of saying Alhamdulillah or being grateful. Like that's all it is. The thought itself. And this is why I advise everyone to just ponder deeply, bro. Like, because you're just, you're literally just cashing in rewards, bro. <laughs> like, if you if you have the right intention, you have the right mindset for it. You could just literally any drive to to any drive anywhere. It could just be thinking about this, thinking about that. Okay, Subhanallah, yeah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. And then that's it. You're cashing in, and also it develops this mindset which you come out stronger on top of it afterwards. Because you could you could spend a whole drive. Just making dhikr, which is also recommended, you know, just saying stuff for Allah a hundred times or just saying subhanallah, mm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do that. But, you know, I mean, I can do that and also think at the same time. You know, and I can think. And then one of those alhamdulillah is like a alhamdulillah for what I've just thought about, you know what mm. I mean? Or for, for this thing. Because, Better alhamdulillah. Oh, bro. So, yeah. Uh, he, we were, he we were also brother, yeah. He also mentioned that. Uh, is it because of uh, sins and this and that? And I, I think it doesn't matter, right? I think it's like, it could be and it could not be. So therefore, um, it, do what, it what, Yeah, it's what, what do you find more useful to yourself, you know? Uh, Brother Abbas, what do you find more useful to yourself? Because when, when things go bad for me, I always blame myself. Hmm. Always. And if it's not something tangible, then I'll blame, I'll blame my sins. Every single time, I And I will look for something that I've done to put... Even if it might not be that, you know, even if in, 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 in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, it's actually because of something else I've done. I always try and think of something and just link the two. Yeah. You know, it could be like, oh, I, I, you know, I was impatient with my son or I shouted at my wife or my, or my mother or anything. Do you understand? Like I behaved badly. Mm. Um, something bad happens to me. I'm like, ah, oh. and I'll just find one of those things and I'll just, I'll link it. And I'll be like, yep, it's because of that. And I'll never right. do that again. Mm. you know and, and now i've got my lesson that is kind of the uh the correct attitude to have i think i mean what i mean is it's not uh you, up to you like that should be mm. the thing yeah of course that should be the attitude um now okay now let's say it's because of your sins that you're feeling this way what does that mean it means you need to do istighfar and you need to try and do good sin, uh, good deeds in mm. al, uh, in al hasanat Yes, it is hasanati. In al hasanati yudhibna sayyat. Uh, hasanat, uh, you know, removes sayyat, removes the bad, bad deeds. So that, that's what you would do. But ultimately, you know, sometimes people ask other people for advice and they ask questions and then they get, the, they get the, what they were looking for from listening to the answer rather than implementing the answer. So, yeah. you know, maybe what I've said is a load of rubbish, but whoever you get advice from that connects with you, the point is to do something differently than now, I suppose. That's how you're going to yeah. change. I mean, this is, this is a quite an old question. So, inshallah, he may have figured it out already. Yeah. But, you know, it's here for anybody that wants to benefit. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's go got... to another email, right? So, Mehdi Hassan says, man, why am I saying the second name? Oh, well. Uh, so, I come to live out of character. Brother, I'm a student of college. I had my intermediate exam on 1st of April, but for this current pandemic situation, my exam is uncertain. It will take place after the situation passes, inshallah. I want to know, how can I balance between deen and dunya? There was a time when I used to look for luxury, but now, alhamdulillah, I'm content with what Allah has given me. I'm spending nearly all of my time learning my deen and working on it, and I'm enjoying it more than anything else. But I'm not studying for my career as I feel like physics or biology will not benefit me in the hereafter. I want to be a doctor in order to please Allah and serve, serve humanity. But I'm not uh, giving time studying for it as my only aim has become to please Allah and to be successful in the hereafter. I don't know what um, I should do. I don't know how to balance deen and dunya. Classic question, bro. I think you're you're very good position to do, to answer this one, the best. I think not that I won't answer, but I think you're just just mm. that bit more primed for mm. this question. Yeah, bro. May Allah make me primed. May Allah <laughs> make me from the primed ones. 
<laughs> I, mean. um, I made a video about this like five years ago. I think it's, uh, it's, it's the answer to this question, my answer to the question, which is, um, you know, I don't really think what you're doing in terms of, if you want to be a doctor, like people don't understand, even me, I don't understand the magnitude in which you get edger from that. You can get edger from that. Like, uh, what's the ayah? وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا You know, whoever saves a life, it's like they saved all of mankind, all of uh, humans. So, like saving lives, helping people. I mean, it's, uh, firstly, it, you I mean, I don't want to, I think it's pretty obvious, right? It's far to keep you know, Someone needs to be doing this. Um, so, so being a doctor is incredibly good. Like, and being a doctor, it's not black and white. Like just cause you're a doctor, it doesn't mean you can't um, study um, your Dean. It doesn't mean you can't, you, you know, worship online in the more written prescribed ways. So yeah, just have it. Ha you seem to have a good intention behind becoming a doctor. Um, so as long as like you actually want to do that, um, you just need to have the right intention. And so go be, be a doctor, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. And you, you, it's not like you quit it. You, you're doing it, but you're just doing it half-heartedly. So do it yeah. properly. Do it with Ihsan and Itqan. Get more ajr for that. Have the niyyah. And live your life according to the Islamic principles. That's, that's, that's it. So use the dunya as the tool to get into the akhirah. Don't just mm. uh, avoid the dunya. You know, you're in the dunya. It's like mm. you're in, it's like imagine you're, you're in the exam hall and you, th you say, look, I'm just not going to write anything on the exam. And then it's like, I didn't take it. So it's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm an, I'm, it's, I didn't get zero. I, mm. I, didn't even, I didn't even enter in the exam. Like I didn't even answer anything. <laughs> it's not like you're in the exam. You got to do something in that time in the exam hall yeah. so um since do you think it's yeah do you think it's a way to mask laziness because i feel like i i fell into that trap when i started practicing. it could be wrong uh, yeah i felt could, like yeah. you know i was because already it's it's difficult isn't it um if you think if you imagine in this circumstance you're in medical school and you understand the importance of like talab al -ilm or uh, praying at night or whatever it is you understand yeah. th that and then you're like Oh, that's a lot. So I'll pick one of the two. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 And also you can, you can f almost fool yourself into thinking, well, I'll oh, just, just getting into the, you know, the basic level of gender. That's enough for me. Mm. You know? And, and that becomes your sort of mindset with a lot of things. If like, if this is an individual that I'd say to them, okay, how would you feel if I said that you could go into the basic level of gender? They'll be happy. But will they just, want to stop there where they want to go higher you know and if they they're not interested in going a higher in gender they're just like oh i want to then they're not interested also in, in achieving the highest in, in, in the dunya and the same right, yeah. you know if you if you've got like that opportunity like you said where you can basically just the ridiculous amount of rewards with the correct intention you know mm. then you would be achieving the best of both worlds because yeah doctors on average are very well paid in in in, in the in the west or wherever all over the world really and then obviously you've got the the opportunity to 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 earn azure in that way and i think it, when i read the question when you read the question it almost it sounded to me like it was someone who's only just started practicing and he's having a struggle mm. um i've learned that a lot of people that are a bit more i could be completely wrong but a lot of people that are a bit more seasoned in how long they've been practicing or whatever they've kind of they've either understood the balance or they've just swayed way too much in either one direction, you know? Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, Hey, go and flip and study. And every day you wake up, you make the eye that Allah rectifies your intention sincerely for him. And you gain that reward and do something amazing with it. You know, you could be somebody, you could end up being a doctor. That's like on the front lines of some sort of war zone, bro. You know, it's helping the Muslims and saving mm. their lives bro. like or saving you, their lives. Bro. You hear about people who, um, What's that? Uh, cataract. You know, people have the cataract uh, stopping them seeing or whatever. Yep. And it's like, if you do this one little surgery, they'll be able to see. And if you don't do it, they'll be blind for the rest of their life. Right. And like, it seems like it's very common and a lot of people are suffering with that. So imagine the people who are helping them with that, like yeah. making the difference between seeing and being blind. Like that's a, that's a huge deal. Yeah. Really a huge deal. And it's, e it's so easy to forget 
like with stuff like this, with times of dunya, yeah, it's so easy to forget to renew your intentions, you know. I mean, you could make one, you know, big dua that says, yeah, Allah, every, everything I do from this point onwards in this job, make it for your sake, yeah. you know, and maybe do that. Mm. And the thing is, I, I've done that before in my job, but I, I don't feel happy unless I've done it just before I do mm. something in the job. You know, but I always forget. And actually, well, like, even in my job, I, you know, it's amazing opportunities for reward. But you'd be surprised how often I forget to rectify that intention mm. because I just treat it as a job. I don't treat it as a, you know, actually, we're in a job, you know, I'm in an emergency um, services job where I'm potentially saving lives, potentially helping people, saving people, et cetera, et cetera. But I just get used to it and I forget completely that this is, you know, the mm. buzz of that first week I ever did it or the first month I ever did it just went mm. a long time ago. Right. Now it's just, oh, I'm going into work. Now um, you're a vet, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. But, you know, <laughs> you, just, you just switch off to all of that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm like, oh. Yeah. And after I've done something, I, you know, I make the eye when I remember, but I'm like, oh, I yeah. should have. I should have done it before. Mm. I should have said before. I should have. Anyway. But, Even yeah. me, bro, when I... Like, especially these days in, in my business, in the work that I do for my business, um, I, I, I'm definitely challenging myself these days, doing things that are uncomfortable. And uh, I, I, yeah, I don't wake up in the morning thinking, yeah, I'm going to do these difficult things for my family, you know, for, you know, to, to, I don't think of it that way because I guess years ago I made that intention, but I, I, yeah. I'm not actively thinking about it. And I think that would be something I need, you know, I can do better, definitely. And I, I just thought of this area, bro, uh, because it's relevant here, because um, there's a misconception that the specific acts of ibadah that Allah mentions, for example, in the Quran, like salah, like zakah, like siyam and these things, um, that is worship. Like that is what Allah, what Allah wants from you is to just spend your life doing that and then eating a little bit of dates and bread and milk and stuff and, yeah. and just do that. But, you know, it's very clear it's that's not what Allah wants from you. And Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تَوَلُّ وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Being good, goodness, good, what is good, is not turning your face towards the east or the west, but, but bir is, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Whoever believes in Allah, and the وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَ And the last day, and the angels, and the books, and the Nabiyin, and the, the prophets, Okay, so belief, though, believe in all those things, which inshallah you do, right? But then what does Allah say? Does he say, you know, and whoever uh, prays all day or whatever, he says, And give money to uh, the family and close people and uh, the orphans and the poor, and the traveler, and those who ask for it, they're, they're so needy that they ask for it. Uh, and those, uh, I think that means those imprisoned or no, no, slaves, right? Slaves, uh, then he says, and pray, and give zakah, uh, and those that stick with uh, their, their agreements and their promises, they actually mm -hmm. do what they promise they're going to do. Um, and those who are stay patient in, in difficult times. This is what Allah is saying good is. Now, how much of this is like pure ibadah and how much of it is relating to how you deal with other people? So mm. much of the, most of this is to do with how you deal with other people. Um, those are the people who have, you know, uh, sincerity and, and they're truthful. Those are the people with taqwa. So we have to like reevaluate what our definition of taqwa and the muttaqi is, right? Mm. It's not, it can be the person who prays all night, you know, every night they're praying the Qiyam al No doubt about that. But mm. uh, don't discount the Mu'amalat. The Mu'amalat meaning how you deal with people and the, the interaction with society. There's a, there's a relationship with Allah and there's a relationship with the society. And, um, you know, definitely the religion is not just about you and Allah. It's about you and the creation of Allah as well. And everything I said can be much more expanded on and uh, told to you by someone way more authoritative than me on this. Mm. It, when you gain knowledge, if you're gaining knowledge, you're going to come across this anyway. Um, so, yeah. Let's do one from my end. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, my God. 
Oh my god, this is very long. <laughs> Got to well, do it someday. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahsan Allahu ilaykum. May Allah honor you both. The podcast has been a means of development and benefit for me. Would be nice to meet you bros one day. Barakallahu feekum. Sure. I'm a male a male student of Islamic knowledge and may begin marriage search in approximately one year's yes. time. Yes. yes. Time to search. <laughs> uh, I reside between London and the UAE. This isn't you, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're just asking a question. I'm not, I'm not a student no, um, of... Uh, yeah, <laughs> go on. We're all the love of Ellen, bro. I am pretty clear that my criteria includes niqab for a potential wife. My parents are a bit concerned with how this will fit with the rest of the family, as the people in my family are quite different levels. I'm concerned that when the time comes, they may try to get me to compromise. So I just wanted to ask your advice on these matters in general. Anything you could advise me would be great, but I can put a few suggestions below, inshallah. Are there any lifestyle things that you'd advise me to know? Because I don't really have a family members who do niqab to ask. For example, I will inshallah strive to get a car to make things easier generally. But if you could please advise me on other things, you feel it's important for me to know the regards to how it works. Generally, like visiting houses, family, being at a dinner table together, the matter of brother-in-laws, etc. Having grown up in the UAE, it's very good and safe here. In the UK, do I need to do any extra steps to make sure I make things as comfortable as possible um, for her? With regards to family being at different levels, of course, for us, niqab is normal and very good. But for some, it may seem overwhelming. So any thoughts on this? Maybe you could share my, any experiences, wisdom and advice. Like, for example, one of the episodes, Akhi Tweet, may Allah on him, mentioned how he handled affairs at the airport. It was quite helpful and I had more insight into the matter following that. Maybe even some ways to make it easier for the family if they're not used to it. So that my wife and family are both comfortable. Starting from even the wedding, how do you make sure that individuals do not take images? How does it all work? Oh God! Any general advice and wisdom, <laughs> and wisdom of yours would be my may Allah raise your ranks. Jazakallah khair. Much appreciated, ranks and your family. Okay. Ooh. Right. I want to just address that. Make sure your family don't take images. Bit before I forget. Um, you can't. You Impossible. Can do. <laughs> yeah, you you are in control. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to judge you what you're capable for, and He's going to judge you primarily on your own actions. Yeah, you know, your what you've done. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't agree with picture taking, then uh, then you are in for a difficult time. Not just weddings, but everything. You know, um, so you just need to. You know, I'd say make your make your wishes known. You know, say that. Whether they do or don't, that's a different story, you know. I wouldn't, you know, you need, you know, first and foremost, Allah knows best. And first and foremost, we are not people of knowledge to start really deeply advising about this issue, I don't think. I think if you want real deep question about it, maybe send a message to Mufti or someone, you know, because he'll give you the raw facts on this. But Damn, I actually tweet with the, with the camel hump. Was that me? With the camera, no, 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 no oh, was, the, the bottle, oh, bro, the bottle. Oh, is it? Oh, this. Yeah, oh, yeah, bro. That's a camel. This is, this is my wife's bottle. Mashallah, big bottle of water. I thought my for posture the, was really audio, bad. For the audio people, he's drinking um, a huge <laughs> bottle of water. Um, so, but I think, you know, if this question was asked to Mufti, I'd feel like he'd just say, like, just take control of the situation. Like, see, it's telling it. Oh, Abdul Kawi, what's that, <laughs> Abdul Kawi? <laughs> just tell them yani, that this is what you want but you know it depends so in terms of you that's that's a that, that, okay let's start from the beginning you telling your family that this is what you want um tell them that this is what you want <laughs> and then mm. if they're not if they want you to comp it depends on everybody's family like i think how he much said bro he said that his family uh, he told them, and they're just a bit concerned about it. Yeah. Um, and he's, but, what he's worried about is if he actually goes ahead and marries someone who wears niqab, then they might flip on him and start saying, no, no, maybe don't marry that one. That's what he's worried yeah, about. Yeah, but that's, 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 it all depends on your family. Like, if, it's, if your family are like suggesting that you compromise or telling you to compromise, mm. then it's up to you whether you want to or not. 
the end of the day, stick to something long enough and they'll just break, bro. That's just the way families are. You know, they'll, they'll make that initial discomfort. But with time and patience, they tend to just eventually accept mm. that that's who you are and what you want and that's it. And it moves on to something else and different things happen. Um, but in that time, you just have to be patient and, and keep going. Um, now, as far as the woman herself and, and about like, you know, what kind of things you need to think about and what kind of preparations you want to make or things you want to make easy for them. It all depends on her, bro. Like, you know, there's different kinds of women, bro. And there's different women that wear, wear niqab and are comfortable in, with different things. For example, like a lot of women may wear niqab and not feel comfortable going out on their own, you know? And I'm not talking like traveling long distance, but just going out locally, you know, they might not be comfortable. Um, you know, I speak for myself. My wife is just wants to go out all the time and I'm very like anti her going out on her own I'd rather be with her basically um you know so if she wants to go somewhere I'll say to her listen do you want to wait until I'm off work and we'll go together or whatever and if she wants to go she'll go like that's fine I don't stop her but I suggest you know maybe and I, you know I don't need to do that however I just I have my concerns like anybody does you know and and I have my vera like any husband should have that they wouldn't want their woman going out on their own you know um, for things that you can take care of anyway. But, so that's one thing. Then there's, you know, if it depends on the woman. Like if, you, if the woman's going to drive or not and you haven't got a car, we'll get a car. You know, if you want to make it easier for her, then I think that's one thing. I think definitely if, mm. if, if she can drive and, or if you want to drive around or whatever, that's a, that's a plus and it saves you having to worry about. Mm. You know, ultimately, if she's wearing naqab already, she's going to know. She's going to have a lifestyle in a way that she uh, deals with it already, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if he's thinking about like what, because he's in the UAE. I don't know if he's thinking about marrying someone from the UAE and then when they're in London, oh, know, right. then mm. make changes there or vice versa. So, mm. but I don't think UAE is going to have that many sort of new and, I mean, yeah, there's going to be the racial element of like people being racist and people being this and that. But if it's London, then it depends what kind of area of London you're going to as well. Like, London has got its, you know, hot pockets of, of Muslim communities. Why am I so bright, by the way? I've just realized like, I'm literally beaming. Yeah, I thought something happened. No, I don't know what it is. Maybe mm. it's just, I need to sort of, there you go. You took the hat um, off. Yeah, maybe. All the Nord came out. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, look, a lot of these things aren't just black and white. Your family are very, very... Uh, they're just a uh, what's it called um, a wild card when it comes to this because we don't really know and your wife you don't even know it's a wild card like you just don't know what they're going to be like it's all about communication you know whoever it's going to be you're not going to know until you just adapt just the old, the only thing I'll say is for himself he just has to be able to have patience able to be to understand and to listen to people's requests and to just work hard to try and make everybody happy to a certain extent, you know, yeah. especially your wife. Like if your wife is comfortable with certain things and then other things she's not comfortable with, then just basically we, that's what men do. Bro. We just, we just pull strings and try and get that balance going the best way we can. And then, you know, we, we, we basically don't want the boat to tip, right? We try and lean this way a little bit, give people some leeway here, give people some leeway there. Oh, if we feel like if we lead this way, the whole boat's going to collapse. Okay, let's just, if we, even if it's like this and it's fine, then that's where we're leaving it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. that's what we do, bro. We just have yeah. to find that balance within our families and everybody's boat is different. Uh, bro, I want to ask you something, yeah? Yes, go for it. Do you think, you know, like, for example, the average family in uh, Tunisia, Algeria, whatever, um, mm. they might not have anyone in their family uh, wearing niqab, right? Mm. Um, I wouldn't say it's terribly uncommon, but it's not common, right? No. Now, if you, if you got married and let's, you know, because you live in the UK and you go over there and your wife wears niqab, um, you know, is that like, does that cause issues? I don't, I don't know if you've actually done that. You've done that, isn't it? So does it cause issues? What were those issues? Um, you know, this kind of thing, like, did it make you question, is it worth it? Did it make you, well, I guess it's your wife. So you know, it's, it's a mix. So once again, every situation is a mixed bag. So in, in Tunisia, the only people that are new that yeah. mean anything to us in yeah. terms of their opinions yeah. would be my auntie and my grand who live there, like yeah. in the house that we would be in. Yeah. Um, 
there's extended family, but their opinions don't mean anything to anybody. It's, you know, in that mm. sense, like they can say what they want or think what they want, mm. or whatever. We don't have to. But live also, with like that. little, little looks and little things. And, of course, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and also where we live, it's not, it's not a huge bustling city. Like it's, we live in a very rural part of a, or the outskirts of a town. Mm. You know, mm. so the rural part, the moment you you're you've done a week there, everybody knows. Do you understand <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, yeah, everybody will know, you know, Mad. everyone will know who that is. That level. Yeah, but you understand what I mean? Like, everybody will know who that is. That yeah. woman there is so and so's wife, who's so and so's son. Oh. Okay, let's talk, talk, talk about it. There you go, done. Week's yeah. done. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, and that's the sort of same thing. Like, mm. you just Social have to vaccine. establish yourself. Yeah, you just establish yourself. Once you've established yourself, it's blessed. Yeah. So, that um, wasn't an issue in that, in that side of things. No, but I don't really. I've got very, sh- I've got a very shady memory of how, um, like if there was anything, I don't remember. I don't even remember going out mm. that much with my wife. It might because we didn't go for that long, bro. So I can't remember too much. However, once again, um, I think there are areas in Tunisia that have it very minimal but have it and it's not completely foreign like they'll understand what that is they'll just yeah, completely yeah. disagree with it you know right. it's not like maybe here like here it can sometimes be like just super foreign yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's not just uh oh that's somebody's understanding of islam i'm a muslim mm. and that's somebody's understanding of islam here it's like what the hell is that mm. do you know what i mean <laughs> so it's very far from them yeah. um what about when you so, went to algeria <sighs> Julie, I can't remember. I don't think my wife was wearing it then. She hasn't always worn it, you see. Right. So, um, mm. but even in Algeria, bro, it's. I think it's well known. Okay. Yeah, it is well from known. I could, yeah, yeah. In the the vibe I got from Algeria was like you can, you can dress how you want Islamically and you're blessed. Yeah, Do you understand. I like? just sometimes wonder, you know, in terms of you know these kind of people like cousins, um, second cousins, like. Would it cause any issues, you know, especially between women? You oh, know right. I mean? like, in terms of, yeah, I understand what you, you know, mean. Like now. mixing, being open to these people, being close, being. So that is, that is one thing that my wife found difficult was with her own family, I believe, trying to like establish the, for example, like her auntie's husband's, you know, so her, her auntie's, when she started wearing it, uh, especially when she started wearing uh, the whole Gilbert first, because she started wearing Gilbert completely and then. She started wearing niqab. So when she started wearing jibbeh, I remember that was a topic of, like, they they were sort of, not the, the, the men themselves, but, like, the wife. So the aunties may have felt like, oh, why would you, why are you covering up so much in front of, you know, he's like your uncle and this and that, and blah, blah, mm. blah. The wife just kept at them. Well, no, it doesn't make a difference. He's not my mahram, blah, 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 blah. And then it just kept going, going, going. And then, like most things, it just fades. You know, yeah. you just got to establish that it's not coming from a bad place. Yeah. You love and respect them. And it's just something that you have to do. And yes, yeah. you'll get nagged and this and that. But yeah. as long as they know that you're not, you're not doing it because you hate them, mm. you know, mm. um, and that's it. Eventually it fades and that yeah. just becomes who you are. You mm. just need to establish that this is who you are. It mm. takes time, you know, because a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of elders as well, like they'll just assume that this is a phase they're going through. That's why mm. they start fighting you about it because mm. it's like a phase. But when it's not a phase anymore, it's just who you are. Yeah. Then it's just like, okay, that's it. That person is known for this. This person is known for that. Yeah, yeah. You know? He's the weirdo that does that and this. <laughs> but, you know, al-ghurabah, al-ghurabah, habibi. Like, what can you say? Yeah, yeah. And that's, what, what it that's is. the only thing I wanted to say about this is like, if you have chosen this path in terms of these different things that make you weird, if you've chosen it, you know why you're doing it, then the next thing is just uh, be firm and, and that's it really. Mm. There's, not, there's nothing, obviously being firm is very, you know, can be very difficult, but mm. it is what it is. That's life, isn't it? Mm. Definitely, bro. It's a test among tests, bro. And every test, every, you know, this dunya is full of them. This dunya is full of them. So, you know, here's yours. Do you understand? Uh, brother, here's your test. Deal with it. You know, this is yours. And I mean, you've got your one. Here it is coming up. And then I've got my one. And here's this, you know what I mean? Every week we've got something new, bro. So, just got to do our best and pass them with the best colors we can, you know? That's what it is at the end of the day. It's just tests and death, bro. And tests and death, that's it. I know I'm trying to yeah. water it down, but I'm, I always try and like just rationalize it as, as to the core principle of what's going on. It's just a test mm. and that's it. Get the test done. Let's pass that. Boom. Because yeah. 
there's more there's things to look forward to inshallah mm. <clears throat> yeah bro yeah okay shall i go to an email if we have any okay yeah we got more man um so i mean this one's from the 10th of may so salam alaikum uh, i recently started listening to a podcast and i have been uh, really enjoying considering a male's perspective on many of the issues you guys discuss i wanted to suggest you guys talk on the topic that you have touched on in other episodes if there's a full episode please direct me to it when I became more practicing it by trying to actively increase my Islamic knowledge, wear hijab, change my lifestyle to a more halal one, etc., I found that the difficulty slash hardships in my life seemed to increase. Prior to this, I had the expectation of things in my uh, expectation that things in my life would be easier after making these changes. Have you guys experienced a similar thing? And would you say this is a common feeling? So when you start practicing, things get yeah. harder. Yeah. Mm, no, I think you're just more aware of it. Mm. I think mm. you're more aware because you're because you're expecting things to be easy, and you're more conscious of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So you think, oh, Allah is going to look up after me. But now you're you're actually thinking about how hard life is. Whilst before, when you don't have that thought, you just life is hard, and you're just it's almost like you expect it to be easy and hard. You haven't you haven't slapped anything on top of it that. It's an expectation that it should be easy. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Now you're more aware that life should be easy, but it's it's hard or harder. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with that though. Like, yeah, life's hard. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tests those that He loves. Here you go. Here's an opportunity. Whether it's because of the sins you've committed before you're practicing, or when you know, do you know what I mean? Then here's Allah expiating those sins. Or whether it's um, Allah's giving you an opportunity to aim His pleasure or aim, attain paradise. Boom, there you go. There's your invitation. Like, mm. and, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says it in the Quran. Like, um, oh God, I'm not going to remember it. It's sort of and it's right at the beginning. Mm. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about. Yes. And um, Jannah. No, can't. I don't know. It. <laughs> I want to get it up now. I want to get it up now because it's going to really bug me. Oi, this I'm trend not... in the, in some of the questions is worrying me because I feel like um, I have an easy life, um, and it, I don't mean that I have loads of money, for example. But yeah. I just I'm dealing well with the money I do have, and I feel like uh, you know it's it's relatively easy. So. You know, what does that mean? I, I, I feel like it's been too long since major hardship. And it's yeah. kind of worrying, yeah. to be honest. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Bismillah yeah. ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam mim. Ahasib al-Nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Wa laqad fatanna al-ladhina min qablihim. Fala ya'lamanna Allahu al-ladhina sadaqu. Wa la ya'lamanna al-kadibin. And that's, I don't know, that literally translates to... Um, did, did do the people think that they're going to be left alone to say um, that they've believed and they're not they won't be tested? I'm not I'm not actually translating this through the translate. I'm just re- translating off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. And and we have tested those that have come before him, uh, so that so that Allah would know who is the truthful ones and who is the li- who are the liars. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is it. You've 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 made an intention to say, yeah, I, I'm going to I believe in Allah's Prophet. I'm going to practice Allah, practice Allah's religion. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it It's clear as day Did you think that you're just going to be left alone? Like mm. that's it Yeah He says it It's clear as day Like that's if, You know If you could read that Inshallah And just appreciate That's what Allah Allah is speaking to you In that in that moment mm. That you've just you just You know Worshipped Allah And he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you Did you think that You're going to be mm. Just left alone now? Like you mm. believe that isn't it? You're not going to be tested mm. Boom. And maybe Look at the people I've tested a... before you yeah. yeah. Um maybe this is also the the kind of practical explanation of inna man usri yusra because mm-hmm. it's like with the usr with the the hardship that you're talking about comes yusra as well. What's the yusr is that you can now deal with the hardships easier than you could before because mm-hmm. you're now closer to Allah. You've got Allah's uh, hidayah and his help. Um yep. So they come together, isn't it? Uh, one yeah. kind of hardship, one kind of ease. Like, you know, definitely, um, bro. Yeah, and it might also be like what you're saying. Like, you just become a bit more um, aware of it. Um, okay, I remember. Like, I, I try. You know, I find it really hard to think about when I, before I was practicing. 
Like I can actively think about from when I start practicing onwards, because there's always been that constant, which is that I am conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know? Mm. Mm. However, before I was practicing, there was no constant. So I can't think about how I used to think. I don't have it in my mind. Like, what did I used to think about day to day? And how did I feel about life? And what was my existential? Did I have like any mm. existential crisis and all this sort of stuff? And mm. I can't remember any of that. It's almost like it's gone. Mm. Even though I know it must have been there because I, I know I had a, a whole period of soul searching, but I can't remember it deeply. But I can remember from the point I started practicing onwards because there's always this thread of Dean that runs through it. So you can always, you can measure it by how religious you were or how, um, you know, your understanding of the deen at that time. So mm. I could say like, oh, my aqidah wasn't that great when I was started practicing because I just didn't know a lot of mm. things. Uh, but now, but that compared to this, and I remember at this point, it was I believe a five this, out of 10. Five out of 10 aqidah. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, like there's that constant. So, um, you know, maybe you were finding things hard before, you know? Mm. And I think, I remember... There is a video of when I, maybe I wasn't too long into practicing. It's somewhere, it might be on Roadside to Islam or something, where I spoke about my journey, whatever. And I, and I say in that video, I think, how I felt like a zombie before when I wasn't practicing. So I must have literally just been, you know, living for the day, living for that moment, not mm. thinking about anything. And that wasn't uh, because of drugs, right? No, bro, never done <laughs> drugs, bro. No, 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 no. Zombie. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, never done drugs. But in the sense that you just sort of walk the earth in a dead way, like you're walking, mm. you're walking dead, bro. Like you've mm. got nothing in your heart in terms of light, in terms of norm, in terms of guidance. You just sort of empty, empty. So it's almost like filling up an empty sort of, you know, a bottomless pit, isn't it? It's just, mm. you're never satisfied. And you're never, and... Oh, yeah, and that's, mm. but then you think, it's partner, do people all think like that? Maybe they did, maybe mm. they do. You know, mm. and maybe that's why they conceal it with entertainment and alcohol and parties and and carnal desires. Like, you know, I have a firm belief, bro, that just people that haven't got faith just want to fulfill like their carnal desires, and mm. they, everything they do is just aimed at that to a higher you know, and higher level. Yeah, yeah, to a higher and higher level. Like, oh, I want to make money because I want to achieve this. I want to mm. look healthy and fit to achieve mm. this. I want to. It all goes to that. Actually, everything goes to that, yeah. which is. Is dark really, subhanAllah. Mm. Life is just um, one big mating dance, bro. Bro, I, I'm <laughs> bro. I just, I just see, you know, I see people's behavior and I think that's just basically, you know, what what they work. And then obviously, have, I, have I could be wrong. I could the, be wrong. Um, have you ever seen like a video of you know someone doing something with the David Attenborough um, commentary on top of yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the one. <laughs> that literally sometimes is life, like how we live life. Even some Muslims, like, oh, he is, you know, oh, he's putting on the thobe, he's growing his beard, he's, and for him in his circumstance, that's his mating dance, right? He's like trying uh -huh. to get married. Yeah, yeah. So, like even Muslims oh. do it. It's funny, man. <laughs> Oh, man. And sometimes it's just for status, you know. Yeah. You know, he's trying to become the alpha male in his clan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, it, yeah. It changes with age and responsibility. Responsibility is thrusted upon you, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, you apply more meaning to certain things. But definitely at that age, you know, at teenagers and I don't know, obviously, what age the question is on. But those ages, bro, that's just literally what all it was about, wasn't it? Like, even at school, like, that's all people would talk about. And it was just... It's disgusting mm. really and mm. I'm, i say that because that this this is the period where i became practicing when it was like i was around 18 when i started practicing so it was like right at the peak of that kind of stuff um so yeah i think that's that's why i it's just empty living it was all mm. empty living at the time actually. there was nothing important nothing no you know you're just an 18 year old with hardly any responsibilities and everybody around you is just chasing desires bro like yeah. non stop and Always. I think that age of like uni age ish is the time when a lot of people start to discover that um, life isn't that simple and easy. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe yeah, that's yeah. just my experience, but I think at least maybe for middle class people, that's when they realize, Oh, okay. It's not that mm. easy kind of thing. Mm. So it could be a, a different, it could be that it's like these things are overlapping for you, but in the yeah. end, it's like, just stay firm. Inshallah. May Allah make you firm. And make mm -hmm. dua for the bat and, and all of that. I mean, all right. Um, I don't know how long how long have we been recording for? Mm, I th I'm guessing about an hour. So should we do okay. a last one, maybe? I w I want to do this last one. 
Um, and then only because it sort of touches on the current events and stuff. This is a uh, salam brothers. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless you all. As you can see the situation in America and the racist tension that came as a result of racism that black Americans have faced for centuries. Um, I was wondering if you could, if you could people, if you could, I don't know, if you could use your platform to talk about the importance of Muslims sharing solidarity with their black brethren and why it's important as Muslims to stand up for justice no matter what. It's been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting few weeks. Um, it's been interesting to see the Muslim discourse on this. Um, and especially like, I don't know if you've been, have you been following anything that like, you know, the, the, the Muslim public figures have been saying regarding it in terms of like yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that, uh, Abu Bakr Islam was quite vocal on some certain parts of it. I know that, um, who else? I know Musa Salam did a podcast for Fresh Grounded, mm. um, regarding it. And I think he did a live stream as well. There's been other public figures as well. Um, even Musa Adnan, he did a short YouTube video documenting kind of briefly the history of racism in America and from a historical point because he's mm -hmm. studying history at the moment. So it was a very good sort of dip, dip in the, the ocean of that history, which was nice uh, to know about. Um, but it's, it's interesting because it's also exposed some people that I don't really know them, but from what I've heard, like, They've just shown that they're just completely ignorant to the whole thing. Um, some people have shown their racist colours in terms of actually being openly racist. How's that? Um, so some, I don't know who these people are, in all honesty. Like, you just see them on the feed, they get exposed. It's like someone was just basically a completely derogatory towards black women and just calling them this and that. He was a Pakistani Muslim guy, I believe. Um, but lots of stuff, lots of stuff. One of the most interesting things that Abu Bakr said was... You know, why is it that every culture has a derogatory term for black people? You know, and he asked, he was a live stream. He asked, he said, oh, you know, I'm asking every single one of you now in this live stream, like, think of your culture. Think of what derogatory word you've got for black people. Bro, I could think of a couple that I've heard in North Africa. Do you know what I mean? And I'm sure every other, you know, you know, whether, whether it's Bangladesh, Pakistani, Af Afghan, whatever, I don't know, whatever community, I'm sure they've got their own. And I think it's awful, bro. And I think it's telling. That itself is telling. Um, and you know trying to highlight the issues within the Muslim community with terms of racism um, you know it's not something that I could say I've ever experienced because why would why, sh why would I do you understand what I mean I'm I'm a North African Muslim you know why would I ever experience anything like that like from who but then again I've never put myself in those positions but you can see yes if there's racism against black people then yes there's going to be racism against black people in our masajid bro course you know which is awful and it shouldn't be the case at all um but you you see hints of that when you go to a maybe a masjid that is of a particular uh ethnic background predominantly you know um i won't single out anybody let's just say i don't know you've got somali masjids you've got pakistani masjids you've got bengali masjids you've got do you know what i mean you've got these messages that are just basically dominated by one community you might get looked at funny if you go somewhere but you know, I can't speak for that because I've never had that. However, the black, the black experience is one that is it's very different to any other form of racism that, that we may experience as just Arabs or Muslims or whatever, you know. We haven't got this history, this long history of, of dehumanization behind it, you know. We haven't got this... Like, people talk now about Islamophobia, right? Mm. But, you know, how long have you... How long has the Muslims lived with... Is that like how long have we been part of this? Yes, we've got history, you know, colonial history. I mean, it exists on many levels, right? Yeah. The the the, the impact that it has on the black community is immense. You yeah. know, and the history, the dark history that 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 is, has been associated with that is is incredibly, you know, incredibly, incredibly uh, traumatic. Um, so to counter the Black Lives Matter movement with All Lives Matter is just it's just, it's just stupid to me. Absolutely idiotic, because it's almost like saying, you know, you're. It's like I can't remember. Someone said it or showed it to me. It was like, it's almost like saying, oh, like my house is on fire. Like, can someone help me? And some next person saying, oh, what about my house? And your house is perfectly fine. Or your house might have a bit of a, you know, a broken window or something. But this guy's house is on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, help. Yeah. Um, 
it's not about all houses matter. It's about right now, this house is like burning and it's been burning for a long time, mm. you know, for a long mm. time. Um, it's just now, especially with this police brutality element to me, bro, you know, being in the job that I'm in, um, just can't help but feel immense guilt despite the fact that I can never s- sincerely say I've been part of anything like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I don't think I've ever, 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 you know, I remember, but then again, I see the ignorance every day, you know, um, because, but it's not, it's, it's hard to talk about this because it's, it's, you don't want to make people seem a way that they might not be just based on an assumption. I've never seen anything apart from one time I at work where one time there was just straight up racism and I just, I nailed it there and then, and I got the person sacked. Mm. Um, I just, I was just like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, not immediately, because it took, it wasn't just me who was in, so it, it was, a, I'll, I'll say what happened. We were driving in a, in a, in a car and there was four of us in the vehicle. And uh, uh, over the radio, a, uh, a fight had broken out. Like, oh, can we get some units to go and you know, deal with this fight? Okay, we're not too far away. Sweet, let's, you know, we'll get, get in there. Okay, so <laughs> my colleague on, who's driving, turns to this this guy this new guy he's, he's not like he isn't he hadn't been um, in the job for long at all turns around to him and goes oh um you know there's a fight coming over the radio how do you feel about being in a situation like that do you know think you can handle yourself and he was like oh yeah i've done karate whatever for a year or two something like that i yeah. can handle myself i can handle myself yeah so so okay cool then the the you know the call's still coming in and the the, the descriptions come in and it, it says basically, you know, long story short, it says like, oh, there's two black guys and one white guy and they're all sort of fighting each other or something like that. And then I think this was a bit of a bait. I'll be honest. I think he got baited a little bit here, but you know mm. what? Fair play. Because the, my colleague on the right who's driving is mixed yeah. race. Mm. So I think his father is black or something like that. So he sort of, he kind of almost, I don't know if he looks at me. I can't remember. My memory's, but it's almost like I, I got the vibe that he's about to bait him. Like he's about to test the waters with this guy. Mm. So he turns around to him again and he goes, so yeah, it's two black guys, one white guy. I think you can handle it. He's already asked him if he can handle it, but mm. the description has changed now. And the guy in the right in the back goes, oh, no, 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 no. Like, and then I was just like, oh my God, what's just happened? And then he looks at me and I look at him and I'm like, oh my God, he's about to, he's about to, he's about to take the bait basically. <laughs> turns around and he goes, what do you mean? not anymore like you just said you do karate whatever he goes no 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 they're scary like he basically he associated black people with with being scary okay right which i was just i just i just in this in this moment because he's mixed race i just let him sort of okay however you want to deal with this we deal with this kind of thing so i just sort of like i just had to look away for two seconds bro and then it was a bit silent. And then he just turned around. He goes, what do you mean they're scary? Blah, 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 blah. And he goes, no, the kid in the back's like, no, I was joking. And no, it's just a joke. And I was like, well, it's not funny, mate, is it? It's not funny mm. whatsoever. And then we sat on that for about a week. Yeah. You know, all of, like, you know, we, just to think about, because this wasn't the only issue we had with this guy. Mm. There were other issues, but they weren't issues about race. It was just issues yeah. about like his work ethic and hygiene, which is an odd one to have. But yeah, there was issues about hygiene. <laughs> okay. He just smelled really badly, like he wasn't showering. But anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but th- that kind of, do you understand? So there was that. And then it was just like, and then eventually we just, we said, yeah, you know what? If he's got that, if he's got that opinion, then we're not, I don't want to work with someone like that, you know, at all. I don't want anyone in that organization. I said, I don't want to, I don't want to get all the way to this organization being not that I'm black, but being of, you know, an ethnic minority and not say anything about that and let that slip whatsoever. Mm. I didn't think he was going to get sacked for it. I'll be honest. Mm. I thought he was just going to get, but I think combined with all the other yeah. stuff that he had and he I was new, know. they just thought mm, you're out. Mm. You know, we don't take chances. Um, now the UK is very different to America, man. Um, yeah. The UK, and I'm not saying it doesn't exist in the UK. Of course it does. But you can't say that it's anywhere near America. Like, it's not. It may have been in the past, but right now it isn't. And, I, and I'll say that based on my own day-to-day experience. And I'm not in London. You know, I don't know what it's like in, in the deep, deep 
you know, inner cities and where, where populations of, of, of black people are much higher. You know, we don't have that here. So I can't speak for the whole entire nation. However, you know, what I see is, is legislation, is laws, is procedures, is, you know, and when someone gets out of line a bit, you know, like you can, you can, I feel like you can literally look up the, you know, policing in the UK. What's like, let's say stop and search, right? You can literally say, look up stop and search. You can say, you can see from top to bottom, what needs to be said to you, what the grounds are, what, you know, all the, all the bullet points that need to be met. And then you can say, okay, cool. So I know what I need to be asked if I'm ever stop and search. And if any of those things are missing, you can, boom, you can file a complaint. And we, you know, we've got, obviously not only we've got internal affairs, like professional standards, we've also got the, the, um, the independent police complaints commission, which is independent of the police completely, you know, mm. and both of these bodies. So the internal one and the external one, both are treated like the quote unquote enemy within the, the, the police and community yeah, yeah. in the culture, in the culture. Mm. Yeah. And that's good. That's a good thing, bro. Mm. Because, you know, I was saying, I was saying this to my dad earlier. I was saying, subhanAllah, there was a new person that joined um, a few years ago. And, and she said, um, she was speaking to a bunch of people in the canteen and they were saying something like, oh, what do you want to do in this organization? Like, where do you want to go in the future? And she said, oh, I want to go into like basically the professional standards department, which is this. And they're like, oh, really? And then when she left, they all started talking bad about her yeah, because... Yeah. Because to them, it's like, oh, this is a person who's going to snitch yeah. on us, or not just that, but like they're going to look for us to make look our life us to fail, basically. make our life difficult. Yeah. But that's good, bro. That's the best thing. Like, yeah. think about it. Because a lot of people think that these internal, you know, internal professional standards people are just going to throw us a bone and, and, and make it easy for us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I'm going to go to them and be like, yeah, this is what happened. They're going to be like, yeah, don't worry about it. We've got you covered. That's not the case whatsoever. Mm. honestly that is not the case whatsoever like people lose their jobs over little th i say little things but things that you wouldn't expect them to let alone if they mm. murdered someone or whatever and mm. like you just don't see it happen I'm, yes there are stories of it happening yes there are incidents and very you know very very mm. famous incidents and in yeah um so you know but, you know what happened that, that with that incident that triggered the um london riots yeah um what would that what was the issue there in terms of those independent bodies did they downplay it did they ignore i don't know it? if so i've obviously joined way after that has happened yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know if things have changed since was then. that 2011 yeah because that's so. a long time ago man wow yeah and i need to look deeply into what we're mm. what's going on now and what was going on then yeah, yeah you know yeah. Mm. because there's hoops that we jump through now that I'm like, oh my God, there's no way it was always like this. There's absolutely yeah. no way, because nothing would have got done. Like yeah. the fact that anything gets done now is sometimes beyond me. Like right. sometimes, actually, wallah, sometimes you think, you know, I could go in, do one job that day. Like I could go in for an eight, nine hour shift or whatever and just do one job mm. because I'd be so stuck on paperwork and things and back and forth mm. and God knows what okay. else. Yeah. I, and I feel like I've done nothing. I've just, I've been stuck on one thing that I know isn't going to go anywhere anyway. Mm. But that was me. That was one resource tied up for the whole day. Yeah. Do you, you understand? Yeah. Um, so sometimes so, it's too much. Sometimes it is too much. Sometimes it isn't streamlined yeah. enough. You know, this modern, modern world we live in, um, mm. we, we haven't created a, an effective system, I think, for policing yet. Um, no. Because if you think about it, uh, for most of history, I suppose, police was a community duty that mm. um, everyone kind of took up on their own. Uh, I don't think people were specifically employed for something like this uh, mm. until recently. So, of course, um, with, you know, with that context, it means that we've only been trying to get policing right in that professional sense for like, what, 100 years, you know, 200 mm. years, like, um, and as because also society changing so much, you know, cyber crime, different types of uh, crime and all that have some some crime is just five years old or whatever. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, we're not there yet, basically. Yeah. And why should you expect to be there when um, policing a, a community used to be something that everyone was involved in or maybe half yeah, the true. people living there was involved in? And now less than one percent of the society is working on that pro same problem. Mm. And and crime has become more sophisticated at the same time. So, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know. Obviously, I haven't done analysis of all the police uh, uh, policies and way they work in the world. Mm. But it does seem it's obvious that, you know, we need to work on it. It's going to take a while before we find the right way of... The, I mean, the, the brutality that we see, bro, from across the pond, I just don't understand. And even, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying this isolated. I'm saying this even like... You know, I'll be sitting with my colleagues, bro, and we'll be watching this stuff. Like, someone will see a video and be like, oh, look at this. Do you know what I mean? Or it will come up on TV because you've got a TV in the canteen or whatever. It's like, um, look at this. Like, and we're just like, what the hell is going on? Like, and all of us are saying that. It's not just one person. Mm. It, it, because it just, a lot of it just doesn't make sense. So, like, for example, this George, George Floyd um, murder, I call it. Like, the fact, okay. I don't understand why he had his knee on his neck. Like, I don't, okay, I don't understand why he was restraining him first. Like, I don't understand what the story mm. is there. You know, I'll be honest, I haven't. I think he was using a counterfeit uh, note. But that, doesn't, that, was that still story. doesn't make, yeah. that still doesn't mean, like, was he resisting or was he, what, what was happening? I don't know. Yeah. But let's say hypothetically, you know, let's say hypothetically he was resisting. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Right. If someone's resisting and you've got them to the floor, mm. you're getting them to the floor what, for what reason? Just to keep them to the floor? No, you get them to the floor so you can actually put some cuffs on them or detain them. Yeah. So that you can then achieve the end goal, which is yeah. to get them up and get them to custody mm -hmm. and, and process them in the, you know, understand and get, investigate yeah. this, this crime or whatever. However, I don't think he, he was doing that. Now, I've been in situations where, yeah, you've had someone on the floor and they're just, they're just, they just want to fight you. You know, yeah, just yeah. like, just chill out. Like, come yeah. on. So, in that situation, what do we do? Number one, and our, this is our training, bro. This is this is bread and butter training. You never, ever, ever go anywhere near their back or like the center of their back or their neck. Like, never. You don't want to kill anybody. Do you understand? Like, yeah. on the on the most selfish level of that, the selfish level of that is like you don't want the paperwork of injuring or hurt someone. But on the obviously the moral level of that is you don't want to kill someone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You just don't want to kill someone. Yeah. So, in, so that's why immediately I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, that guy is clearly a psycho. Like, well, whatever. I don't even want to give excuses to him, bro. Like, that's just nuts, you know? Mm. Second thing is, okay, I've been in situations where somebody's done that. Like, okay, there's, there's violent situations where just it's just mental. Like, we, we, you can't, you're not focusing 100%. So I've been in situations where we just had to get someone to the floor. And I've noticed, oh, this guy's got his... This guy's on his back, and I've I've moved that leg away of not my leg, obviously someone else and a colleague's leg. I've gone boom, move that guy's leg away. No, mm. you don't want that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like get do something. You got all these people, bro. That are his colleagues that aren't doing anything. Like what's that about? You haven't even got anyone tapping his leg to get his leg off. Yeah, like, what's yeah. that about? And I think you know, yes, there's the racism element of it, and I think yes, there's the there's the this is a this is a strong black man, so he can handle it element of it like that's racism bro do you understand what i mean mm. like i i i think whether he wanted to kill him or not is, i don't know you know i don't mm. know if it, we're at the level of this guy wanted to kill him on camera i don't know you know i yeah. can't say that however may, maybe we'll you know the least i can say is that this guy thought that this guy can handle it because he's a big strong tough black guy yeah you know? yeah because that's a that's the stereotype isn't it so let's play mm. on that and let's you mm. know oh i'm going to show him how strong he is and blah 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 and mm. he can resist me also yeah bro you know, and the people that, that – it's just the Wild West, bro. It feels like an absolute Wild West out there. And, yeah, on top of it, we've got photos of the guy, the officer himself. He had, like, a – what was it? Make Whites Great Again hat on his Facebook or something. Like, he was of that persuasion. Um, so, yeah, why would you put it past him? Yes, this was racially motivated. Yes, this was – you know, this was a murder. This was – you know. But this is fascinating because – Yesterday, me and my wife wanted to watch that Malcolm X movie that came out in like 1992. And the beginning of that movie, bro, is just this raw video, VHS footage of the cops just beating the crap out of, of, of an unarmed black, black man in the middle of the night. And it was not, and this was not, the film was 1992. I don't know how old that video was, but let's think about it. And I said to my wife, I said to her, listen, somebody pulled out an old school VHS camera to record that. There's no, there ain't no smartphones or anything. So that, that was somebody actually made a conscious effort. Where's my camera? Where's my, let me get a camera, wherever that was, and film that. We're only seeing it now because everybody's got a camera on their phone, you mm. know, and it's HD and it's 4K, you know, it's mm. crisp and I can put it straight onto YouTube. And that's why we see more of it. doesn't mean it, you know, whether it's gone up or down, I don't know. Can they argue? They can't. 
they can't say, oh, no, actually, uh, since then it's gone down. Like, we'll never know. Okay? We'll never know. Yeah. So we can't even prove that sort of stuff. And they don't have national standards, bro. I was reading on the UK police pages, so like police communities in the UK who are critiquing all of this. They were saying like there's, there's like 17,300 policing bodies in the U- in the US mm. like different across you know all the states so like not all of them are the same they all operate differently and they all have their own standards and their own training and their own uh, tools and all, everything and it's almost like like if they're that you know un you like if they're that disparaged mm. between them then it's almost like they're saying hey here's your gun here's your car mm. hey, go on do your best mm. you head out there and fight yeah. some crime you know yeah yeah. The only counter narrative, not counter narrative, I don't want to word this wrongly. The only thing I want people to remember, the only thing I want people to remember is that during all of this unrest, you know, there are still people making 999 calls. There are still people getting beaten up by their husbands or their wives. There's still people getting raped and molested. There's still people getting robbed. There's still people getting stabbed. There's still people. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? There are still people in need of that service, you know, of, 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 of police or of, you know, of law enforcement or whatever. Yeah. So we can't look at it in a vacuum. You know, we have to think deeply. Like it's a job that needs doing. So when someone says, um, and I don't blame them, bro. When I see, like, when this first started, I'll be completely honest. When this first started, I saw, obviously I saw the stuff that was happening. I shared that. But then I also saw like there was some police that were like, oh, taking a knee out in solidarity with the, with the protests and stuff. And I, at the time, I shared that too. I was like, see, look, you know, there's good and bad in everyone. And then after a while, I was like, you know what, nah, delete. And I deleted that, you know, because I thought this doesn't solve anything. I'm not throwing them a bone. I shouldn't be throwing them a bone whatsoever because the fact that it's got to this point is absolutely outrageous. Taking a knee, you know, as an officer's taking a knee doesn't solve anything. Like it doesn't fix anything. It's just, oh, you know, I wouldn't put it past them if it's taking a knee just to make this protest a little bit easier for ourselves. Do you understand? We're dealing with this a little bit easier for ourselves. Actually, there's evidence of them, like there's video footage, well, lie, Lavi, and there's video footage of them dropping off bricks, bro. They are dropping off bricks in neighborhoods to give them excuses later on to, to get violent on them and to say, mm-hmm. hey, look, there's, ev- there's evidence, bro. I saw it in my own eyes, actually, on, 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 on Twitter video, there was evidence of two police officers sitting on a, sitting like leaning on a car, watching some white woman um, spray paint in um, Black Lives Matter on a on a on like a destroyed sort of property and basically making it look like. And it's all to just to just give them justification to use more force. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because they're in they're in a bubble, bro. Not only are they predominantly in this sort of like predominantly white bubble because that's probably the demographic but they're also in this police culture bubble where the only thing that matters is going to work getting the job done and going home to my family you know like so when you know when we dealt with a protest all you think of is oh it's just another protest that we have to deal with this protest let's move on to the next thing because we've got things to do oh we've got a protest today do you understand like what's on the menu we've got a protest today okay let's deal with it yeah yeah, do you understand what i'm trying to say yeah yeah it's like what you were saying about going to work, having the good intentions, you, you mm. know, you sometimes forget that these guys don't have any element of intentions. They are mm. fully on that mode of go to work and let me get home. Yeah. yeah. I don't think bro, like anyone who's been in the job long enough, I don't think they actively think about like, Oh, I do this to help people. Like, yeah, I'm talking, yeah. like if you ask them, illa they'll qaleed, say it. Yeah. Yeah, illa if you ask them, they'll say it, but do they think about it day to day? Mm. I know I don't, and I only speak for myself. That's why I say that. Yeah. And I'm probably someone who is very not, I'm not attached to the culture whatsoever, actually. I'll be honest with you. I'm not attached to the culture. I'm not attached to that way of life. I don't live and breathe this job. Do you mm. understand what I mean? Like, I'm not. You're the ugly wear, duckling, bro. Bro, I don't wear the t shirt and, and wave the flag. Like, I don't, bro. I mm. honestly don't. But, mm. like, and it's some, I've, I fell into this place because of just many things that happened in my life in, in succession you know, that I eventually just ended up here. It wasn't something like I set my mind to do this. I just happened to get the offer. So I took it up, you know, out of, you know, many things that I was trying to apply for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's good because it also gives me this sort of, 
It's almost like what we were talking about earlier when we were speaking about the Tunisian president, hypothetically. It's like he never really wanted to be a president, but he was sort of pushed to do it and he got it. Mm. And to me, I'll be honest, I never really wanted to do this. Do I still want to? I don't even know. But I'm here, you know? So it gives me this sort of almost independent perspective from the inside, which yeah, you don't yeah. really get. Yeah, like one you know foot I mean? in, one foot out, yeah. Uh, yeah, which, which is why it was interesting to see, bro, the discourse between the colleagues when all of this was going on. Uh, at least on because I haven't been at work I've been ill but like just seeing stuff in like the group chat and stuff and it's just like it's like what I said earlier they're looking at it as just oh here's another protest do you know what I mean and I'm thinking of it like oh my god I feel so guilty right now of the position I'm in how can you treat this as like another protest this is massive but they don't think about it like that because they haven't got the experience of racism they haven't got it you know I've had a taste you know a taste of, of racism in this country I have not lived my life as a black man. Do you understand? Like I wouldn't begin to, to imagine. Do you understand? Mm. But because I've had that little taste of being, you know, otherized or ostracized or whatever you want to call it, then I'm like, rah, like, yeah, that's deep. But mm. it's, it's, what, what does it need? Achy, you know what it does need? And I'll be, and I said this to a few people who are in, in the US, some brothers are in the US, some brothers are in um, London. I said it to them because they know what I do. And I said it to them, I said, listen, you know, people are passionate, you know, but nobody wants to do the job, you know. None of those, you know, who in that Black Lives Matter protest wants to do this job, you know. <laughs> they want the, but they don't want to do this job now. But yeah, if it was like, if a hundred years from now, it was not like a diverse multicultural blessed place to be, then yeah, they might want to do this job. But it doesn't get like that overnight. Yeah. It gets like that through mm. long change. Yeah. So it takes people that are very passionate, that think they've got it in them to join up and to do what I did in terms of, and I'm not saying do what I did like I've done anything. I'm saying in that moment, you know, when I saw something, exactly. I said, hey, I'm not going to. Exactly. Not That's exactly what's, what's needed. That's what but will think, ultimately make a, some think, difference. Maybe not exactly. all. Exactly. And, but and yeah. it's, but it's, it's time. It's time. And you know what? There's people in this job, bro, that want that. And they work, and there's departments that try and achieve that. There's people that work in those departments, like, you know, the equality, diversity departments, whatever, that mm. actively really believe in that and they want to, to bring that in. I'm part of a race equality network and I've had emails from them regarding all this stuff. And bro, they meet up like every month or two, a few months or whatever. And it's just like mixed people, bro, like all sorts of backgrounds. But they're just passionate about trying to transform like policing and stuff and make it diverse and, and, and fix these problems and stuff. And they, they, they're heartbroken when they see this stuff, but the majority don't really get it because it doesn't affect them. Do you mm. understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, okay, I would love to see it, bro. I would love to see, you know, diversity, multicultural, you know, everything. Because it, it, not that it fixes the problem, but it certainly makes it a lot better. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think, I don't think, you know, I mean, when I was in London the other day, uh, bro, I... I found it fascinating. I was in London. I went to, I went to pick up my car because I parked it in a car park. While I was in a car park, there was like this golf with like three Asian guys in it. And when I say Asian, I mean like maybe Pakistani, Bangladeshi sort of Asian. And they're all like smoking or something. And then this police van like rolls up. And I was like, oh, here we go. So I just basically stood there just watching. Bro. Mm. <laughs> I just wanted to see what was going on. Anyway, bro, out of this van, not a, there was like six, seven or eight officers came out. Not a single of those officers were white, bro. I found that incredible. Like wow. there was, bro, there was like Muslim, there was ones that were visibly Muslim and ones that I don't know about. Definitely all of them were mixed. Um, some black, some Asian, some, I don't remember looking. All, mm. One of them even had like a kufi on, bro. Bro, wow. like fully kitted out with a kufi on. One of them had like a massive beard. And I'm sitting there like, wow, I wonder what it's like to be in that. And mm. then, bro, everybody in that scene was not white. Do you get me? Yeah, like the yeah. people that they were searching. That's London. Right? Everybody. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, I wonder what a conversation is there. I wonder what the, the mindset is, you know? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. was I was hovering. Actually, I'll be honest with you. I was hovering around <laughs> hoping that they would come and search me because I just wanted to just sort of, I was so curious. Obviously, I've got nothing to hide, bro. I just wanted to know, like, what does that look like in action? You know, mm. what does that look mm. like in action? Mm. Because I'm the only, I'm the only Muslim, you know, guy in my might be in the organization. I don't know. I don't want to say that, but definitely in my town, my city, um, you know, and there's only one black, black colleague in the whole. Yeah. At the moment, because the other two have left. So in the whole city, there's only one black colleague. So it's not much to, 
you know. But mm. anyway, mm. it's deep, bro. It's deep. And I think uh, I'm ashamed that in America, the, the conversation just doesn't seem to like. It's almost like they don't want to have that conversation. Like, I feel like here, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody. I feel like here, I, I could imagine them having that conversation. Be like, okay, yeah, let's do something about this. Over there, bro, they're just not interested. And it could be because they feel empowered by the whole, they feel empowered by Trump. Trump hasn't said anything about it. So we're not going to say anything about it. We're just mm -hmm. going to follow what he tells us to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're, we're bolstered and we're empowered by mm -hmm. his leadership. And actually, yeah. if... Don't complicate let's be, our lives kind of thing. Yeah. Let's be real. If he's if he's up there, bro, saying what he's saying and preaching what he's preaching, bro, then mm. you know, of course, his mm. policies. Tremendous, his... tremendous country. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. Easy for everyone, Yaki. I mean, crazy times. Yeah, bro. In a couple of weeks, two, three, four weeks, who knows? I think I'll. Uh, we will dig into this deeper. I feel like um, uh, emotions are high. Tensions yeah. high, uh, people are sensitive right now. So, inshallah, in a few weeks we can dig into it because I have a lot of thoughts, wallah. And I think, inshallah, it's going to be very thought provoking. But I just don't. I, firstly, I'm not confident about what I'm, my thoughts are right now. Of like, yeah, I don't want to share something that I just thought of yesterday. That's not clever. So, no, no. so in a few weeks, inshallah, we can dig into it. I actually wanted to do. Uh, I've had it on the list of potential topics: racism, right? But I just feel completely, I, I actually feel like I'll, I'll have nothing much to say because I, I don't have much experience of it um, really and truly. So, uh, but mm. now I feel like there's, there's something to say. So that'll be good, inshallah. All I want to say on this episode, at least, is um, I think America, you know, it shows it's a sick society. It's an ill society. I don't mean sick. I mean sick like ill, ill. Yeah. Um, illness of the heart, illness of um, all of, you know, everything you see. And you can say, yeah, most Americans are nice people. That's great and all, but the society itself is shown to have uh, major illnesses. And uh, ultimately, you know, in a shirk, a zulm and al shirk is a big, a big uh, zulm, a big, uh, how do you translate zulm? Uh, oppression, oppression, a big, uh, big mistake, a big problem, man. Yeah. So shirk uh, breeds many things. And yeah. uh, interestingly, Sheikh Haytham made a video um, he said he's going to treat different elements of, of this current situation in different videos. But in this video, he was talking about abuse of power. And he said, as long as you don't believe there's anyone above you in power, then you will abuse their power. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not obviously Muslims have abused power in the past, but that is, is part of the formula where it's like, yeah. I'm a superpower. But then it's like, oh, Allah's above me. Allah, Allah. I'm in need of Allah still. Okay, yeah. That's and he so, said that yeah. he said abuse of power uh, can be, it, it, you know, the Islamic view of it, if you like, it can be yeah. um, summarized with the two ayat from Surah uh, Iqra, which is, um, insana la yatra, ar uh, mm. it, You know, indeed, uh, humans, um, la they, uh, they oppress, they transgress. Um, I, I think it's, that could be translated as, um, as long as they uh, s claim to be independent of need, as mm. long as they, they, they feel like I'm the one in power, I've, this power's from me, I don't need no one, that is when they will definitely be op oppressors. So, mm. um, so uh, he's probably going to pile more videos on top of it, but thought that was interesting. And it's like, yeah, uh, above you is, is, that, is that power. And if you don't mm. have any awareness of that power in your conscience, then, in conscious, then yeah, this is, this is kind of right. what happens. Yeah. The, the capacity and the opportunity to do bad is incredible, Achi. And mm. I speak from that firsthand. Like, Achi, well, I, if I was a shaitan, bro, the opportunity to do bad is just there every single day. Achi, like, you're in people's homes, Achi. You're dealing with people's belongings. You're dealing with people's lives. Do you understand? You're dealing with people's freedom, dealing with people's well-being, dealing with people's health. Like, the opportunity and the capacity to do bad is just... Achi, like, I can go into somebody's house, Achi. Like, obviously, not normally, but, like, if I, if I need to be. Like, I could find... Basically, I could find myself in a situation where I'm in somebody's house and they're not there every single day. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Every single day, Achi, I'm in someone else's house, you know? 
and I'm either welcomed in there or I'm unwelcome in there. Do you understand what I mean? Or yeah, and it's yeah. just like, or there's nobody even at home sometimes. Okay, and it's just like, oh look, there's some money on the counter. Oh look, there's a phone. Oh look, mm-hmm. there's a, do you understand? But do you understand what I mean? Like, mm. well, lie. And you know, Alhamdulillah, I've never seen anyone take anything. But I'm saying the mm. capacity to do evil is mm. there in front of it. And you know what? If people did take stuff, I would not be surprised. Mm. Because how, you know, how many times are you going to dangle that carrot in front of a donkey before he bites it, bro? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I praise Allah, well, lie. Yeah. It's true, bro. So, yeah. It's, exactly. Mm. MashaAllah. Right. It's Maghrib here. This was a long one, man. My battery is dying. All of that good stuff. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad we got some of these questions. Uh, Look out for that episode coming up, inshallah, in the future. Keep the questions coming in at uh, uh, mindheistpodcast.com. Go over there. You can email us or you can send it anonymously like uh, some of the people have done on this episode. And inshallah, we'll cover that. I I appreciate your passion on on that last one. It was good. Um, It's good when it comes from, you know, just straight kind of uh, stream of thought. So, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, good episode, bro. And inshallah, keep keep it locked. Keep it locked for new episodes, inshallah. Ya Allah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha anta. Fastaghfiruka wa tuhu alaik. Assalamu alaikum.